So, why is Blade the best Marvel movie? Well, first off, Blade technically isn't a Marvel movie, at least not in the way people view the Marvel brand under the banner of the Walt Disney Company. Marvel movies have a strong brand identity and a specific style that informs all of their movies. They've successfully cornered the market for shared cinematic universes. All the Marvel heroes and villains are interconnected in one overall storyline. Each movie interacts with every other movie, either directly or indirectly, and by osmosis. In this sense, no Marvel movie can operate independently on a stylistic level. They must all fit into the sanctioned branding created by the parent company. And while this process of movie making has created an endless sea of cash and worldwide popularity, there's something about the Marvel brand that feels inauthentic, or maybe generic is the proper term. Basically, every Marvel movie since Iron Man has essentially sacrificed its inherent cinematic potential in order to hit a predetermined formula. One could argue there's nothing wrong with formula, but one could also argue that formula breeds predictability, and predictability breeds boredom. I thoroughly enjoyed Avengers Endgame, and while the film has some truly thrilling moments, I wasn't all that fond of the movies it took to get there. Endgame represented the culmination of the Marvel formula, and the Russo brothers seemed to throw every trick in the blockbuster rulebook at it. But as much as I enjoyed it, it still doesn't really compare to Blade for me. Blade has what every Marvel movie is sorely lacking, impressions. Blade is an impressionistic comic book movie. What do I mean when I say impressionistic? Well, at the risk of being reductive, there are two ways of making movies. One is communicating thematic ideas directly to the audience with no ambiguity or risk of alienating a single person, at least with regard to the flow of information. The other relies on a riskier but ultimately more cinematic approach, expressing a thematic idea with impressions rather than direct information. Blade heavily relies on this impressionistic approach to tell its story. There are many moments in the film which heavily rely on mood and atmosphere to communicate ideas rather than dialogue. As a result, the film gets under one's skin in a way no other Marvel movie is able to. This is the risky approach paying off and creating something greater than blockbusters aspired to. This heavily impressionistic style was created by Stephen Norrington, the film's director. Norrington has an effects background, most notably working on James Cameron's Aliens, and he brought a distinct stamp to Blade that elevated the film beyond its pulpy comic roots, injecting it with a kind of soulfulness that is missing in other Marvel movies which rely more on blunt force to capture audiences. Dodgy visual effects aside, Blade's action sequences are just as thrilling as any you'll find in the other Marvel movies. It immediately announces its formidable presence during the incredible opening sequence. This sequence holds absolutely nothing back in creating a hellish nightmare of vampire anarchy that was as disturbing as it was thrilling. The trippy rave music, the foreboding cinematography, the impressionistic shot selection, the way the sequence builds, gradually hurtling towards the shocking reveal of an orgy-like bloodbath. This opening is the most memorable of not just any Marvel movie, but any movie period. I've never been as mesmerized by anything in the other Marvel flicks. But Blade works mostly as the result of Wesley Snipes, who brings an endless supply of charisma and dramatic weight to what could have easily been a silly role. He treats Blade with the kind of reverential respect an actor would reserve for an Oscar-worthy part. Snipes and Norrington rely more on looks, gestures, and body language to communicate who Blade is as a character, rather than dialogue. This is something the other Marvel movies don't really do, or at least don't do as extensively as Blade. Those films rely more on dialogue, stating the obvious and leaving no ambiguity about what might be going on in a character's mind. In Blade, you often don't know exactly what he's thinking, and this silent communication creates an aura and mystique around him that is supposed to be what comic book movie characters are all about. Take the scene where Blade goes to pick up his serum. There are literally five lines of dialogue. No back and forth about Blade's relationship to this man, what the serum is or does to his immune system. 
No clever cheeky dialogue to get a chuckle from the audience. Things are expressed mostly through body language and the music. And as a result, the scene continues to build the mystique Blade will become known for. Now, Blade does have an R rating. And this rating allows it to get away with portraying certain things the other PG-13 Marvel movies can't. But there are many R-rated movies that rely on the same formulaic tendencies the Marvel movies utilize. An R rating doesn't guarantee soulful storytelling. But while we're on the topic, the Blood Rave and other intensely graphic sequences allow Blade to more fully embrace its dark subject matter. But let's face it, is there anything less disturbing about bad guys wreaking havoc and death on the population like you see in the other Marvel movies? Yet, these sequences are treated with a blasé kind of casualness that belies their inherently disturbing consequences. This is a deeper problem with blockbusters in general, which treat violence and mayhem with all the seriousness of a video game. Blade doesn't hold back, making sure the audience knows just how screwed up the events on screen are. And as a result, the movie is just that much more effective in creating a stronger impression. I honestly get a greater impression of an apocalyptic tone from Blade than I do from Avengers Endgame, because in that movie, as depressing as some of the events are, it never really feels all that dangerous. The unambiguous, straightforward storytelling style that got us there never left any doubt as to how things would turn out. Blade felt more unhinged, reckless. It was more transgressive, doing things that made the events on screen feel dangerous, and as a result I felt a greater sense of consequence. I was more upset by the death of Whistler than I was by the death of Tony Stark. Ultimately, these are personal conclusions. Everyone has their favorites, their least favorites, but I feel there are some fundamental truths to storytelling and cinema that can't be denied. Marvel, with its assembly line, prepackaged comfort food aesthetic, just doesn't thrill me as much as I think the filmmakers would like. For a brief moment in time, Blade managed to do what no other Marvel movie could. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like and subscribe button, as I'll be posting more content in the future. Thanks for watching.